uh, deciding whether to be um, edifying or amusing tonight, I chose to be, I think, amusing. Um, I'm going to read from um, a novel called Humboldt's Gift. Um, the passage I have chosen is from the early portion of the novel. Um, and um, tells of the, a trip taken by Charlie Citrine, the narrator, and von Humboldt Fleischer. The, um, just a moment. I'm trying to find the passage I chose, but I seem to have lost it. Ah, I've got it. Um, Humboldt is going to drive Charlie to his uh, uh, house in New Jersey. Charlie's going to spend the night there, and then they're going to Princeton tomorrow, the next day, where uh, Humboldt has promised Charlie a job at the university. On a Sunday in September 1952, Humboldt picked me up on Barrow Street near the Cherry Lane Theater. Very different from the young poet with whom I went to Hoboken to eat clams, he was now thick and stout. He charged down Barrow Street in his four-holer, the first poet in America with power breaks, he said. He was full of car mystique, but he didn't know how to park. I watched him trying to back into an adequate space. My own theory was that the way people parked had much to do with their intimate self-image and revealed how they felt about their own backsides. <laughs> Humboldt twice got a rear wheel up on, on the curb and finally gave up, turning off the ignition. Then, in a checked sport jacket and strap-fastened polo boots, he came out swinging shut a door that seemed two yards long. His greeting was silent, the large lips were closed. His gray eyes seemed more widely separated than ever, the surfaced wail beside the dory. His handsome face had thickened and deteriorated. It was sumptuous, it was Buddhistic, but it was not tranquil. So, from the present, I see two odd dolls in the front seat of the roaring, grinding four-holer. This Buick was all over mud and looked like a staff car from Flanders Field. <laughs> the wheels were out of line, the big tires pounded eccentrically. Through the thin sunlight of early autumn, Humboldt drove fast, taking advantage of the Sunday emptiness of the streets. He was a terrible driver, making left turns from the right side, spurting, then dragging, tailgating. I disapproved. Of course, I was much better with a car, but comparisons were absurd because this was Humboldt, not a driver. <laughs> Steering, he was humped huge over the wheel. He had small boy tremors of the hands and feet and he kept the cigarette holder between his teeth. He was agitated, talking away, entertaining, provoking, informing, and snowing me. He hadn't slept last night. He seemed in poor health. Of course, he drank, and he dosed himself with pills, lots of pills. In his briefcase, he carried the Merck manual. It was bound in black like the Bible. He consulted it often, and there were druggists who would give him what he wanted. <laughs>